capitalist endeavors. And uh, at 2 o'clock, 2.30 in there, I'm going to talk about what's in that DVD. I'm going to talk about core foundational conservative principles in terms of how I see them, but simply just to, not to tell you what they are because you already feel them in your heart. But what I want to do in there at 2.30 2 is I want to explain how you can defend these ideas, how you can promote and defend these ideas so you can go out and do the same kind of things that we're doing. Because frankly, if the three of us just were to go around to every single one of these events in the country, we wouldn't have a chance. Our entire job, our entire purpose in life is to empower and instruct you guys that you can go out and do that, and then you'll go and speak at events, and then you'll be able to talk to another hundred people, then they'll go out and do it, and if we do that, I have no doubt whatsoever this republic will be in the same kind of health that it's always been in, because the citizens of this country are what made this country great, not the people in Washington, not the people in New York, not the people in Hollywood. Uh, and uh, with that said, uh, I don't know anybody who's doing more of the job that the immune system needs to be doing than uh, my new friend James O'Keefe, so let's bring him up. I want to structure this just a little talk. Yeah, whatever. Well, um, you all saw the videos in there, I guess, the kind of overview of what I do, and um, um, you saw how it has such an impact on the culture, and I think, Bill, you say that culture is downstream. Yeah, politics is, politics is downstream of culture, just, just very briefly, to the degree that people, no matter how well informed they are, no matter how well informed you may be, people don't vote based on what they know, they, base, they vote on based on what they feel. What do you connect to? What are your values? What moves you? What do you believe is right? What do you believe is wrong? And our culture is determined by what we see in movies and what we see on television. The Greeks had their mythology, the Romans had their mythology, everybody has their mythology, the British had... You know, they had Gilbert and Sullivan. We have uh, Friends and we have uh, Apocalypse. Everything I know about the Vietnam War, up until I started actually reading about it, I learned from <coughs> Apocalypse Now and Platoon, written by two of the most anti-American, anti-military people in the world. And I am telling you, this entire generation gets all of its information that it votes on based on the pop culture. You've got to change the culture. And what James is doing is James is attacking the culture in such a way that Jon Stewart is on his side. When Jon Stewart is on James O'Keefe's side, that is, a, that is a fundamental change. And James, I don't mean to take any more of your time, but let me just say this. The left has late night comedy, uh, universities, high schools. They have uh, music. They have movies. They have television. They have the news media. They have all of these pillars that are constantly firing, getting their message out there 24-7. We do not have to destroy all of those things. With all of this advantage, Barack Obama, the, the unicorn, the once-in-a-lifetime candidate, 52% of the vote. We do not have to move the ball 60 yards. We have to move the ball three yards. Three yards. And they will never win another election again. So when James O'Keefe can turn John Stewart, James O'Keefe didn't turn John Stewart, by the way. John Stewart has a shred of a soul left. The truth, the truth is what turned John Stewart. When John Stewart saw the truth in that video, he changed his mind. And that's why I think uh, James and Andrew Breitbart are the most important pieces on the board today. Thank you. But it, also, you say, John Stewart, um, you know, the truth changes mind. You know, keep in mind that people say, oh, you know, O'Keefe, Giles, Breitbart, you guys took down Acorn. Oh, we didn't take down Acorn. Democrats in Congress took down Acorn. They're the ones who defunded Acorn based on what they saw. They, they couldn't deny it. So I think that there was a. Um, there was a kind of, they couldn't, the great thing about it was on tape, what are you going to say? The great thing about what I do is that it doesn't matter who I am, it doesn't matter what I look like, it doesn't matter what I talk like, it doesn't matter what I dress like. All that matters is what's on the video. That's why they always say the videos are doctored and edited. They actually said that Christian, in the teacher's union video, we hired a woman to play Alyssa Flashing, the teacher who's the radio. They, they, I, I don't even, I have barely, I, I barely know how to use Final Cut, but they, they say that I actually put lips on the acorn in people's mouth <laughs> and using advanced, sophisticated technological capabilities, make it so the lips open up and close, and then I doctored in audio to, you know, to... to, to Hired a woman who uncannily had the exact same vocal cords. The oh, same vocal cords. This is, I just have to jump in. I'm so sorry. I just have to jump in. <laughs> what, what James is saying here, when people, when, when these leftists say that you use thousands or hundreds or millions of dollars of advanced CGI effects in order to doctor a documentary, this is the cognitive dissonance 
in their heads going on where they cannot be confronted with what they actually believe. What they actually believe, confronted with reality, is causing them to have these kind of delusions. And more of this means that the more of this they're exposed to, the more they're going to begin to say to themselves, well, maybe I'm not right. Maybe I'm actually wrong. Maybe I should look at what the actual evidence says. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the CGI effects, I mean, I mean, the, the doctor and, the, and the, uh, everything like that. So the great, but the great thing about what I do is that it kind of speaks for itself. And, and Obama actually signed a bill to defund ACORN. President Obama wow. is the one who defunded ACORN. Not me. That's um, and President Obama defunded us, uh, signed a bill to defund it before the New York Times assigned a reporter to the story. In other words, YouTube videos prompted the President of the United States to sign a bill to defund ACORN. Before, before there was a, a word about it. There was actually a New York Times, it was really funny, on September, September 11th, 2009, the second day into the controversy, I, looked at, I opened up the New York Times, and this is my first major flotation with National Story. I had done some things that were big, but um, my involvement in them were, was, uh, was not published. And you I go through- You more when you were younger? I did the Planned Parenthood, I did some Planned Parenthood, yeah. And I was looking at the New York Times, and I saw the articles written, they have a byline, right? All the New York Times articles. There was one article without a byline, it was an AP story. New York Times usually doesn't run just straight AP. The one, it was like one little two-liner, it says, today, the Census Bureau cut ties with Acorn. It didn't even mention that there were videos. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I remember this is my first flotation with the media machine. And I remember thinking, how could you not, first of all, the organization's tied to Obama. Second of all, there are videos involved involving prostitution. How could you not print this stuff? And I remember thinking, this is outrageous. So, but I just want to remind people that, you know, everyone's always so, you know, disillusioned with politics and I can't make a difference. I mean, YouTube videos prompted the president to defund Org Acorn prior to the New York Times assigning a reporter. That's just incredible. Um, I would echo that it's important to go after the media itself. This is something that Breitbart instilled in me. Of course, with a lot of these projects, they, they indirectly go after the media. Uh, for example, um, because the New York Times didn't assign a report to the story until after Obama defunded Acorn, the New York Times got embarrassed. And the ombudsman at the New York Times had to print a long, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, mea culpa, that said, slow to tune in. <laughs> Google it. Slow to tune in to the a Acorn story. Um, CNN also uh, ha have put on a person on their panel, some guy, I can't remember the name, along with the Salon.com uh, guy, Joe Connison, and they said, after the Acorn was, but this is an isolated incident. <laughs> they got thrown out of all the other offices. This is prior to us releasing the other offices. <laughs> so we released the first video, and it, it, it's automatically an isolated incident. When Congressman Wiener you know, said that he got hacked, he got hacked. And I just love how the stenographers just print whatever they say. You know, that's, that's what they are. They're, sten they're stenographers. They, they, basically, journalism today is there's two forms. Two, uh, not journalism, but media people do two forms of things. They do either stenography or they do damage control. Um, there's no investigative reporting anymore. So it creates, it's so easy to do investigative reporting that you can so much as walk into an ACORN office and ask a question and reverberates through the halls of Congress. There's no journalism anymore. And it's, it's not difficult. Um, so I think that the other main thing that we do is I think if you want to make something big, it has to be newsworthy. It has to be newsworthy. A lot of people say, how do you get so much news? How do you? Because a lot of people, they do videos. They do, they do, um, they do put stuff on YouTube, they wonder how do you make it big? You gotta make it newsworthy. 